All right, hey, hi, hello. How's it going, guys? My name is Eddie Rezod, and welcome back to more Not For Broadcasts. Now, before I begin, be sure to like, subscribe, and get the bell on to stay up to date on all my latest videos. So, last we left off, we made a couple more choices. We are richer than usual. But, uh, interestingly enough, I checked my Steam achievements, and apparently we have aligned with the... Uh, with the with the with the government somehow or other, I I felt like we were playing rather uh, neutrally, but uh, guess not. So here we are. I mean, um, we are kind of at a new part. Well, it's day question question mark because the last time last thing we did was we got zapped by uh, electricity when the when the office was going through some shortage and uh, we. Had to charge off some weird ass creatures for some reason. I don't know why, but that's basically what we did. So now we're getting ready. Uh, so here we go. It's not a mess. Everything is hazard. Uh, it's ramshackle and characterful, and I'd expect you to know the difference. Crazy music, I guess. Megan's place look lovely. There we go. But I can't see it, can I? Uh -huh. Thanks, Jenny. How's Lockin with the boyfriend going? Decided to take his chances on the wild streets, eh? Rather than endure another romantic okay. comedy. And then we have to keep an eye on this, I think, when if like more of these monsters show up. I'm not sure what Jeremy those Jenny monsters are actually. Yes, I can hear her. I can she's she's her. not talking to you. Yes, I know, I can hear her. Shall I count us in? Make it so. Okay, ten seconds. Break a leg, everyone. Preferably a furry one. Here we go. Your your Five, head's missing. Four. Three. I know who's gonna talk first. Good evening. Okay. I'm Jeremy Dalton. And I'm Megan Wolf. Our main stories tonight. Oops. Snugglefucks? It's been almost five weeks since all the Mrs. Snugglehug's toys woke up simultaneously in factories worldwide and began searching for their husbands. Oh, that's the weird. The Mr. Snugglehugs were so short sightedly destroyed. And now, as this photograph suggests, they may be changing tactics. Built to surprisingly Eww. traditional gender stereotypes, the Mrs. Snuggle Hugs have been arming themselves with a variety of household implements. <laughs> All the more reason to make sure that cat flap is taped up good and tight. What the hell? This frightening new development means that even those previously thought to be relatively safe, like the young and fit, must take care to watch their backs and keep their ears open for the soft steps of sinister feet. Going stir crazy. With no signs of Mrs. Snugglehug's batteries running out, and the government lockdown now in its 31st day, 31st day, Jesus. Across the country are taking some unexpected turns. Dramatic reports are beginning to emerge of uncharacteristically bold behavior in homes across the country. Ah, uh, piss off. We're not talking about the model planes that occupy so much time in the Donaldson household. In response to a nationwide lack of toilet paper, which was, of course, raided by the Mrs. Snugglehugs to construct their vast hives, I hear ya. many Go of the away. adults have turned to a more childish solution. Or at least, that's their excuse. Going it alone. Popular mm -hmm. crustacean Johnny Hamsheaves is back in the news today as this astonishing photograph that he leaked himself shows exactly how he's been spending his lockdown. It seems that when the lockdown was hmm. announced, Johnny's long-term partner, Tiffany Lemour, was busy in the capital preparing her new show, Chocolate Clit Bombs, for its okay. now postponed grand I've got to put number three. Let's hope the exhibits don't melt. Being locked in alone seems to have made poor Johnny realise the empty pointlessness of the professional sportsman's existence. I like that, while no longer bringing great wealth, still offers vacuous conversation, narcissistic wives, and an utter lack of social importance. Let's hope he doesn't run out of toilet paper for those tears. The shape of things to come? In their own version of a lockdown for more than 45 years now, the descendants of doctors David Wong and Ingrid Sforsborg and Horgensbord and their unfortunate team today managed to get a personal statement to the surface using flagellized imaging equipment. Many of the Sforsborg uh. and Horgensbrood, as they've come to be known, have certainly captured the public imagination. With a recent vote naming Helvetica Sforsborg and Wongensford, the most likely to survive a massive electric shock. Helvetica Sforsborg and Wongensford here with a little update from Dante's Taint. This year is going to be our biggest ever harvest and autumn's just two weeks away. Or at least that's what we think. There's no real day or night down here and all the clocks broke a long time ago. But if our calculations are right, we think that for you up there it is... Wednesday, the 412th of January, or as you call it, Piss Mouth Day, or possibly Boxing Day if we're a bit out. So, uh, happy Piss Mouth! I hope you get all the presents you ask for left under your Piss Mouth tree. 
I'm hoping to complete my collection of rocks. See you in September. Helvetica out. It's hard to believe they've been down there so long now. But yeah. as everyone knows, time moves uh. differently underwater, Jeremy. Oh. That's why goldfish are so stupid. That's right. And as anyone Oops. will tell you, the deeper the ball, the thicker the goldfish. There's no denying the logic of that. Class war, a worrying turn today for the formerly rich as ever more punishing measures are announced, Alex. Uh. With the country becoming ever more hostile to the previously wealthy, those who manage to skip the country Ooh, must know. be very grateful for the people one. who help them right now. We have it from several sources that rich runaways have actually begun to spontaneously lose their teeth one by one. Is it some sort of cosmic justice? Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Masked vigilante dental Dennis been up to his old tricks again. And Advance speaks out. With the snuggle struggle proving a test to governments around the world, Advance HQ released a curious statement this afternoon. In the accompanying release, they asked us to stress that they have been uh. listening and that this should be taken as a response to how the people really feel. We've certainly done our bit on this show to contribute to the political climate. But let's not forget, how we behave in our home lives is what really matters. Let's hope it's not just me who filled out that questionnaire, Jeremy, or we're all in trouble. <laughs> oh, I filled it out too. Let's play that statement. Let's play that statement. Good evening. Go away. In these difficult times, it's important that we all feel united. That we're all in this together. And for a short time, we must bear significant change. To help myself come to terms I don't like that we can't be neutral. Time, I've written a list of things that are just as temporary. Like, that, that's why the game assumed that I, I, I aligned with the government. I didn't, I didn't mean to. All of you. Christmas with the in-laws, your child's school play, youth, beauty, that phase you still don't talk about, your New Year's resolution, your husband's hairline, your waistline. What's she talking about? I wasn't paying attention. In office, your fleeting lifetime, and all the human endeavor. I hope my relatable list has allowed you to find reassurance to know that just as these things pass uh, the, what are these things together we will endure as we always have thank you collectible stuff later tonight jeremy will be catching up with brave roving reporter patrick bannon while i check in with two friends of the program who find themselves stranded at opposite ends of the country and then in part three there's going to be a quiz presumably because there's nothing more important going on that you might like to report on if you were saying a news program and in a moment we'll both be asking sophia remington how such a trusted brand can have made such a terrible manufacturing mistake and what it describes here is help from popular psychic scientist Delia Lyle. Oh, I like her. <laughs> no, you don't. Why do you do that? <laughs> That's all coming up on tonight's National Night. Oops! News. Shit! Shit! Messed up. Ah, <laughs> oh, wake off. What are those things? Oh, those are the snuggle hugs. Oh, oh. First tonight, how did we get here? Where are we going? And most importantly, who's to blame? Joining us from her ranch in Arlingsfield, Millkirky, is the CEO of Remington's Fist, internationally respected business Bengali, Sophia Remington. Thank you for having me, Megan. I'm a huge fan of your work. And from a crystal healing laboratory, what I assume is a garage in Upper Lowington, inexplicably <laughs> renowned psychic scientist, Dr. Delia Lywell. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Sorry, us? Myself and the eminent professors. Is that what you call the voices in your head? The voice seems to attract dead scientists. I don't really know why. The money? They express themselves... He's getting so spicy nowadays. Algebra and quadratic predictions. It's all very technical. No, it isn't. I concur. Ms. Remington, the entire Snuggle Hugs range will surely go down as the biggest public relations disaster in history, won't it? Well, of course, that's one world record we would never have thought to claim. What can you say at a time like this? There is only one thing that can be said. 
I'm sorry. We're sorry. From everyone here at Remington's Fist, but especially the dedicated inventors and world-beating engineers at Remington's, we are deeply, deeply sorry. Who could have predicted that letting a child's toy learn how to love would have such unforeseen consequences? Mary Shelley? Oh, we see you, Sophia Remington. You are preening by a metal vessel, and where you venture, you will see neither land nor sky. Is that supposed to be the future? Only the past is concrete. I remember being a child in my grandpa's workshop. Go away, go away, go away. First dancing hangman toy. He put it by my bed, and when I couldn't sleep, I'd wind it up and let uh. it go, and I'd watch that happy little execution and Seriously. wiggle and wave his tiny new and dance before my eyes. Grandpa sold thousands of them, on the quiet, obviously. And he used the money he made to found Rimming Toys, which is now just one small part of the global supermassive megacore that is Remington's fist. Sadly, we lost Grandpappy along the way. He died in a fire at the preschool tobacco factory. Another one of his pet projects. But we never lost his spirit of adventure. Preschool tobacco factory? Yes, sir. I'm not entirely certain what your grandfather's offensive thoughts <laughs> have to do with the current predicament. The spirit of invention, Mr. Donaldson. The passion to I feel like Don problem solve. Donaldson is and like is everybody in reality. Like, what the hell are these people talking about? Simultaneously around the world from midnight to night. <laughs> we said science. Science. <laughs> we hear its song on the breeze. Its breath on the wind. Its fart under the covers. How does she do it? Well, well please don't keep us in suspense any longer. It won't be my future. She's making up this. Remington's fist is proud to present Snuggle Trap. Safety and security in these dangerous times. Each box of snuggle traps contains Seriously, devices, go away. All guaranteed to stop a missing snuggle hug in its trash. That's enough for a lawn or four window boxes. And you want to know the best thing? They're only $129.99 a box. Now that is affordable peace of mind. <gasps> we see you, Jeremy Donaldson. Not now, honey, I'm mid pitch. The best thing about <laughs> snuggle traps is they're powered by next generation Flardinium batteries. So, however long the enemy lasts, these traps will outlast them. <laughs> we see you, Mr. Donaldson. You are screaming and yelling. Your friends are crying. They fear you. Oh my god, I just got chills. Did anyone else just get chills then? I think I did. I think it's more concerned. I think I'd be more concerned about these traps. Um, quickly, maybe before we go to the break, um, these appear to be attractively repackaged landmines. Aren't they dangerous, say, to children? Oh, hell yeah. These are not toys. What the hell? But they're explosive fun. Sophia Remington, Dr. Delia Lywell, thank you for joining us. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the situation across the country tonight. Don't go away. We'll be back after these bandages. Was that all right? What was that? Did you see that? I saw Snugglehug there. She <laughs> seems very nice, that young Miss Remington. I think she'd make an interesting dinner guest. Do you think so? I think I'd rather spend the evening shoving Delia's sacred crystals up my skeptical arsehole. <laughs> Hello, mate. It's Dave. You're not going to believe this, but I've decided to come home. Listen, I'll call you back at the next break and we can talk about how I get me job back. Cheers, Alex. See you, mate. Can I? I don't know if I can switch it out later. Should I? I mean, since I'm already aligned with the government agenda, do you think I should keep going? Yeah, well, it's been a long time coming. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. You said it, I've said it. I can't switch it out he already, so. Yeah, I can't switch it out. Oh well. I just don't want it getting back to him that it came from us. Hey, no, 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 Jenny. You're not backing out on me now. We're in this together. It's gonna work. We'll get him. I've never played. You're on the blues. I've got no idea how old he is. 40? 17? Yeah, She's yeah. talking about Donaldson? <clears throat> okay, coming back. In five, oh, these guys again. Four. Three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Roof. Now it's time to take a trip around the country to hear how the lockdown might impact the nation from some friendly faces. Joining me are respected academic Katie Brightman and author of Alan James's Kites, Alan James. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Megan. 
Thanks, Meg. It really is a pleasure, Katie. I enjoyed our little heated encounter. I wish I could say the same. So first off, Katie, how are you coping? I'm holding up okay. The lockdown directive was so sudden that, like many people, I haven't been able to get home. Oh no, what, what? happened? It's not that sudden. I was staying at a hotel after an international policy convention, and we had a particularly uh, heavy night out. You know what economists are like. <laughs> Notoriously hate splitting the bill. <laughs> and I overslept, and as you can imagine, I've been here ever since. But there are certainly people much worse off than me. Exactly. My tour has been cancelled indefinitely, and I've had to refund every single ticket, even the cheap seats. Oh, Adam, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, people are being quite rude about it. They don't seem to realise I've already spent it filling the beach house with beef. The crisis claims yet another victim. So, this is just a reminder that my book, Alan James's Reich, is now available in paperback. Huh? Unbelievable. I love Jesus Reich. What was that? You. You're unbelievable. So, Katie, how do you think this might affect the economy? Should we be worried? Very, Megan. Not to sound dramatic, but this could be catastrophic. Why is this Alan James even on this thing? At least this lady's ec economical. She's having, like, an interesting conversation. Spreading this latest liberal hoax. That's what they want. They want us quiet. They want us compliant. And they want us inside. A hoax? How on earth can you say that, Alan? Well, I haven't actually seen one of these supposed toys. Have you? Well, no, but... Did you know 3,000 people die every year from regular toys? That's a lot Ooh. of people. I'm going to pause just a little bit because I think they're talking smack about COVID. I feel like that's what they're talking smack about. So, uh, the e economist is more of like the liberal people and like the the Ellen James is more of like the skeptical people because like he said like three three thousand people die of other toys every year that's a that's an actually an argument that uh skeptics actually say about COVID that you know what why 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 should we be concerned about COVID when like people die of a normal cold every year so that that's one of the arguments so interestingly that that's something to look out for when they're having this conversation to see like the satire on this just as likely to be hunted down by a yo-yo or a tennis racket. He makes an excellent and persuasive point, Katie. Don't listen to her, Katie. The press are the enemy of truth. She's agreeing with you, Alan, you absolute She's shit. Agreeing. Well, then I must be wrong. Alan, you're <laughs> recounting your statement that these toys aren't dangerous. People are saying they're just like normal toys, and that simply isn't true. Corrupt media lies. And Katie, how do you respond to Alan's claims that Mrs. Snuggle Hugs might be dangerous after all? I suppose I, I guess I'm agreeing with him. Thank you, Katie. I appreciate your support. A lot of folks are saying this Mrs. Snuggle Hugs situation will all blow over. <laughs> Look at Donaldson with sandwich. Uh, yes, right, exactly. Oops. We need decisive action from the government. We need huge financial support to protect our workers and our businesses. We need to support the vulnerable and we need to, to repent. Exactly right, Katie. We brought it on ourselves with all our liberal indulgences like our cake and health care. We need to act now and begin sacrificing our firstborns. Or at a point Did you say firstborns? Family pet. <laughs> Absolutely, Alan. If we can all successfully come together as a community and perform the ritual, hopefully we will appease the great ancient. What? What? Katie, could it be any worse? Luckily, over the past few years under advance, they've invested heavily into health. So the system can actually bear the strain. Is it lucky that the Llama Lords have unleashed a horde of man-made monsters on its own people to conceal the enemy within? Will you just stop for five fucking seconds? The global alliance of fish people. They live together! They're living in the same place. That's you. That's what you sound like. I don't, I don't sound like that. Yes, you do. You do, Alan. You do sound like that. And that's why no one wants to be your friend. I've got loads of friends. No, you haven't. I don't think you do, Alan. Yeah, stop lying, Alan. I'm not lying. You are... Oh, good one. Well, I'm telling. 
Alan James. Alan, you know Katie what they Brighton, say about Thank you for Alan. joining me. Some real food for thought there from two of the territory's leading minds. Interesting. Are they like related? Any moment now, he said, I'm telling. over to Jeremy, who is going to be bringing us an up to the minute report Ooh. of the status of the nation. Over to you, Jeremy. Thank you for what I'm sure was a reasonable debate, which really contributed to the national conversation. Next, out on the streets, someone who's always doing exactly that. It's Patrick Brennan. Are you there, Patrick? Uh, hello, Jeremy. Yes, hello, I'm here. I'm here live. Um, apologies for the quality of the broadcast today. Um, couldn't find any cameramen or, or women uh, brave enough to come and join me, so uh, I'm out here on my own. Right, and... Uh, He's not out. He like, gets, gets a wall or there. something. Yep, I... Oops. Uh, as you can see, behind me, the streets are currently completely deserted. Uh, but my question, Jeremy, is just how long? I mean, could there be danger lurking just around the corner, waiting to end the fledgling career of this young policy journalist before his, his full potential is even realised? Will he die underappreciated by management and, frankly, if you ask me, very, very much underpaid? I don't think there's any danger of that, Patrick. Um, what's that on your jacket there? Oh god, it's two and three, shit. I thought it was two and four, so I pressed four. I bet. Um, in fact, showing the sort of resourcefulness that would make me an ideal candidate for, I don't know, for example, an anchor position starting whenever they'd like. From your point of view, Patrick, um, just how safe are our streets? Uh, not, not, not safe at all, Jeremy, not safe at all. Uh, I'd recommend people staying inside, uh, following government advice, and not putting themselves at any risk at all. Uh, unless, of course, uh, like me, it's for groundbreaking journalism reasons. Mm -hmm. And just where are you, Patrick? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, in the street, on the street. Which street? Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I think I'm, I'm struggling to hear you, actually, uh, Jeremy, there. Which street? Which street are you on? Oh, which, which street am I on? <laughs> um, I'm, oh, God. Um, I'm just looking for a shot. There it is. I, I'm, I'm on uh, uh, Bannon Avenue. Bannon Avenue? Yep. Bannon Avenue. Yeah, no, I can hear you fine. Yep, I'm on Bannon Avenue on the sign, it says there. Like Patrick Bannon. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that is like, that's strange. That's a weird sign. I don't know what's going on there. Where are you really? I'm on Bannon Avenue. Um... Really? All right, fine, I'm not on Bannon Avenue. I'm on... I'm at home. Yeah. Alright, fine. Well, I mean, I don't mean my bathroom, technically, but, you know, I, I couldn't face it, to be honest, mate. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's terrible out there. I don't want to go outside. They're everywhere. I'm sorry for lying. We don't expect any less of you, Patrick. We don't expect any less of you, Patrick. Can you hear that sound? I can, yes. Uh, I'm no expert, Patrick, but it sounds unmistakably like a, a tiny fist <laughs> tapping on your door there. A tiny fist oh, fuck, it does. Oh fuck, Jeremy, shit, no! Oh, oh bollocks. Perhaps there's a small queue of tiny fists, each wielding a different gendered household implement. Ready to oh, bash yeah. in the heads of lying little roving reporters. But you're lying, aren't you? Oh you're shit, lying. fucking, 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 listen, listen to me, listen to me, you bastard! If you're out there, just to piss off, you little fucking snuggle fuck! I'm too talented to die! Oh, what the? <laughs> no! Okay. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't worry, Patrick. Uh, I'd say you've got a few seconds before they break their way in there and finish you off. <laughs> what do you see, Patrick? Oh, Jesus. Oh, jeez. Thank you, Patrick, for that report. Showing the nation... Uh, more jeez, he's planet, dead. Just where you belong. It's time for another break, but uh, when we come back, we'll be hoping to take your mind off the world for a little while, and who knows, maybe even bring you a few smiles. Join us after this. You're damn right. Something just broke. Yeah, I had him delivered. My yes. window just broke. It's a Bannon Avenue. Oh. Oh 
Oh no, there's one inside. Don't. Oh no, is oh, this feels like Friday Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm gonna have to beat him somewhere. Hey. No, I'm not. Hey, go away. I'm not going to. I don't have to. No, you're being a child. Uh. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. No? Shut no. up. Oh. Five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly. Well, welcome back anyway. We know isolation isn't easy, so finally tonight, we have something a bit different for you. Even though some people, but it's not our job to entertain the public with absolute nonsense, other more important people overrule those people. So it's time to find out who will National Nightly win and who will National Nightly lose. <laughs> oh no! So, how do we play? Well, joining me as a man who knows all about playing, it's Tommy Harris. Hello, Tommy. All right, Johnny. It's good to see you. She, she did something. And, uh, how are you finding the lockdown, Tommy? What do you mean lockdown? The enforced isolation of everyone in the country. Ah, yeah. I think I heard about that. Actually. Yeah. You're in bed, Tommy. Yes. Yeah, you called during nap time, so. Of course, that's my fault. So, um, why don't you tell us how the game is played? Well, it's pretty simple, Jeremy, you sausage. I'm going to ask <laughs> from around the territory three questions about what else yours truly. And those people are going to get a chance to win a very special prize. And what are they playing for, Tommy? Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Jeremy. Oh. Thank you. This. Seriously, go away. Is that... What is that? It's my athletic support, Jeremy. Oh. But I've signed it, so... Oh, well then. What a fantastic prize. <laughs> Have we got anybody waiting to win this once-in-a-lifetime prize, Jerry and Jimmy? I believe we have Angie on the line. Um, how do you feel about winning this man's old pants, Angie? I've never been so excited, Jeremy. And can I just say, I love you. Both of you. Well, you've said it now, haven't you? Uh, <laughs> I love. Come on, he's. Oh, I love Donaldson. He's such a good actor. Well, what can I say? Uh, my name is Angie. <laughs> Always has been. Um, I'm a human woman, and my dental hygiene has been described as acceptable. Oh Jesus! Brilliant! Right. Well, shall we get this shambles on the way? Absolutely, John. Can I get thirty seconds on the clock, please? We haven't got a clock. Yeah, I did ask for a clock. So, well, yeah. um, why don't you start, and I'll stop you when it inevitably becomes unbearable to watch. I love it. All right, <laughs> here we go. Time starts no, 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 now. Question one. When is my birthday? The 13th of August at 7.19 a.m. Wow. That is absolutely correct. Question specific. Two. What? I said, what is my favorite color? Crushed praline four. Correct, the color of my nipples. And finally, Angie dear, Ooh. what is my star sign? That's a trick question. You were born outside of the human understanding of the cosmos. What the Unbelievable. hell? Unbelievable, that is correct. Stop the clock. Wow, that really was tough to watch. How did you do it, Tommy? <laughs> well, Angie, my love, you got every single question right which of course means you lose and win absolutely nothing thanks for playing angie bye do we have another contestant on the line at jelly bean we do indeed we should have sonia artleach are you there sonia <laughs> of course i am jamie darling thank you for being here sonia oh there you are tommy Mwah. Let me guess, you work in theatre, don't you? Is it that obvious? <laughs> what gave it away? Was it the glamour or poise? <laughs> it certainly wasn't your inherent sense of humility. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us about yourself, Sonia. <laughs> oh, well, if you must play this game, <laughs> I am a 
theatrical agent. Oh, this guy is annoying, that little stuggle hug. Samuel Coffee Cup and Jody Carpet Burn, amongst others. And uh, how's the lockdown affected you, Sonia? Uh, well, they may have closed the theatres, shut the studios, and I feel like there should be a way to kill this thing. they won't get me that easily. How are you managing without any work? Due to a savvy clause in all of my artist contracts, I am able to claim my 15% from their unemployment benefit. Oh dear. <laughs> wow, that certainly is sharp. Standard stuff, standard stuff. And can I ask, where are you speaking to us from? Well, I work from home, you know, to keep costs down. And uh, who's this? Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, when they gave the order, I was actually mid-meeting with a client, so we've been isolated together. No fucking Oh, it's a... Way. It's that mess teacher. Fuck. Is that Tommy Harris? I'm a huge fan. <laughs> can I just tell you how bloody brilliant you are? Actually, Jeff, we're about to play a game, aren't no, no, we, no. Tommy? We've got time, we've got time. Look, if it's not too bold, I think I am in love with you, Mr. No, Harris. No, it's not too bold. That's all right. Ah, uh, go away. Hey, I, I'd love to show you some of my stuff. I've been working on some new shit. Well, at least you're already aware. During lockdown, uh, we've been workshopping some of Jeff's ideas for much younger children, haven't we? People start having their children, do they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I've been developing a. I love that also. Younger children. Well, we'd love to see it, wouldn't we, Gerbil? Absolutely dying to. Right. So, what do kids love? Uh, timely just put payments from their absent fathers. Shallow and overproduced musical numbers. That's right. Animals! <laughs> so, I'm trying to address the things that kids need to know, but through a medium that they'll understand. Do you understand? I think, yes. I think so, yeah. Jeff's one of my best clients, aren't you? I am. Yeah, yeah. So, the first one we've been working on is called The King of the Jungle's Mortgage Repayment. <laughs> it's about a lion who's having problems with his interest rates. I see. Does he have a broker? Uh, he does. Yes, yes. He's a porcupine. How did you know that? Well, your work is universal, darling. It speaks oh. to people. <laughs> I'm going to say something to you, mate. I think you're onto something, yeah? Ooh. Ooh, the bear, the bear. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Right. <clears throat> this one is much better. So, this one tells the tale of Mr. Bear. Now, Mr. Bear is a very sad bear because all of the other bears don't think that it'll amount to much and they tell him that his plays are lazy and derivative well, i think you're under something there now mr bear is a tragic figure picture this he's at his lowest ebb the trees are closing in he can't even face his salmon can he but then he meets someone that will change his life this guy's gay more annoying this is Fucking gripping. That's right. He meets a wise old octopus who takes him under his wing and says, No, Mr. Bear, don't be sad. You're not like all the other bears. You have this ambition and these dreams. Such fucking dreams. I think I love you, Jeff. <laughs> and what you need to do, Mr. Bear, says the octopus, probably doing an eight-armed gesture or something. <laughs> what you need to do to find happiness in this crazy old forest is you need to set yourself more realistic goals. It's called Mr. Bear Lowers His Expectations. Wow. <laughs> you really have taken yourself to new death. And what do you uh, want children to take away from this? Oh, fuck shit, shit, fuck. <laughs> I said a more realistic world view. Are you all right, Jamboree? It's Jeffrey. My name is Jeffrey yes. Donington. Uh, no, oh, stop. Donington. I thought his name was Donaldson. Well, all the animals learn a thing or two about inevitable mediocrity. Yeah, and Mr. Bear settles down near to his parents' cave, stops trying to make his band happen, and he goes into, into bear telemarketing. Becomes a bear math teacher. Oh, and we end. <laughs> oh, 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 we end on a big 
big musical number. Oh, there's dancing. Uh, it's very repetitive, so it's catchy but not too challenging. Um, oh, no. If you like, I could go and get my boom box. Yeah, uh, you know, I might be able to... Hang on, uh, can we get Angie back? Why not? The more the merrier, as they say at orgies. Right, I'll just fill then, shall I? <laughs> Coming up in a moment, it's the world premiere that nobody saw coming. Lights! Or wanted. At all. Right. I can only apologise in advance what we're all about to... What was that? Did you turn this shit in thing? Ah! Ooh. Well, there's all sorts of creatures down on Dangly Doodle Farm. Like wise old Mr. Octopus with way too many arms. There's Mr. Pig and Mr. Cow, they're always in good mood. But that's cause they don't know they'll soon be sliced up into food. Uh. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to turn into despair. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your dreams go to die. Mr. Raccoon, who wants to go to the moon? He'll end up as a bus driver soon. Mr. Porcupine thinks you'll read the news at nine. He'll end up as a janitor who stinks of turpentine. Mr. Tiny Mouse thought he'd own a massive house. Ended up in a bedsit where he can't control the louse. Mr. Horse thought he'd go into professional sports. Now he's an alcoholic and he's on Oops. his third divorce. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's the place your life becomes an endless questionnaire. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to die. Lower your expectations. Maybe you could get a job in telecommunications. No matter how you try, you'll never reach the League of Nations. The best you'll get I'm getting the rhythm for the second part a little bit different. Go away! I'll pop the kettle on. Oops! I've got your favourite biscuits. Look, Petal. Me and your dad do love you very much, we do. I know he doesn't show it, but that's just his way. Oh, go away! He'll tell you on his deathbed, just like his father did. And perhaps he'll break down one Christmas and no one will mention it again. The thing is. Did you, that guy went back to sleep. <laughs> You know Chris and Sam are close, and you've been really quite selfish. No, 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 you have, darling. I'm sorry, but you have. All Chris wanted was for you to commit a fairly serious What's she talking about? help smuggle money out of the country. And you were busy thinking about yourself, weren't you? Now, oh. Sam's stuck in the middle. Hold up. And well, She's talking about me. You're a good parent, Alex, you are. But, oh, you say it, Nigel. You balls it right up, you daft AF. You've embarrassed yourself and us, you're letting those kids walk all over you. Awful. Awful business, have some bloody respect. Love, we're, we're not angry, we're just... Disappointed. We do hope you can do better in future. I'm Mummy Wolf. 
Have a remorseful night. Ooh. Sorry you had to be here for that, hell, mate. I really am. Pull your fucking socks up, sunshine. Disgusting. Oh, no. It was just a shock, Alex. A real shock. A massive fucking shock. Let's play that bit with your marbles now. Fuck off. Um, um, oh, <laughs> that was a dream. That whole thing was a dream. What's going on there? Oh, B, A plus. I got the A plus for that last part, though. Okay, no love for both of them. Uh, but okay. I think I'm gonna leave this episode here. So, I figured out what those little things were, but as to why that last part happened, I'm not too sure. Maybe like halfway through I fell asleep or something, I'm not sure. But we will find out in the next episode. I did read that this uh, Not For Broadcast is only about 8 hours long for one playthrough. So we'll see what happens. Uh, it might end sooner, might end a bit later, considering uh, depending on how fast I play it. But like I said, we'll see what happens. So for now, if you like what you see and you like what you hear, be sure to like, subscribe, and get that bell on to stay up to date on all my latest videos. As always, be safe, take care, and I'll see you when I see you. Peace!